as did mentioned, A-B testing, uh, you pit different variations against each other to ultimately pick a winner. Uh, multi arm Bandit really isn't that different. Uh, with both of them, you have these variations, you pit them against each other, and you hope that you find a winner, which is mostly, uh, most often the one with the best conversions. Uh, the difference, however, is that with A-B testing, you manually assign your traffic, uh, usually equally, uh, between these different variations. So everything gets shown the same amount of time to the same amount of visitors. And then once you've reached this statistical significance, you'll pick your winner and you'll show that on your website. Uh, what you do is you spend a lot of time here uh, explaining or um, exploring uh, which variation is going to be your winner. Whereas with multi arm Bandit, you rely on these machine learning algorithms to continuously and automatically assign traffic to the best performing variation. So what you have here is that um, if you have a variation that performs poorly, we take traffic away from that and we know there's one that performs much better, we give that one more traffic. Um, this results in a to higher total amount of conversions, um, which also means you miss out on less conversions and you get to the, re the end result quicker. A uh, good example for that would be campaigns where, say you're running a weekly campaign or, or um, a contest that you want to do in a week. If you do A-B testing, probably by the end of that week you'll have your significance and there is no time anymore to exploit the, the winning result. However, with multi arm Bandit, the traffic would get allocated to the best performing one early on uh, this would lead to a much higher conversion rate um, compared to A-B testing, but also compared to doing nothing at all. So experimenting here would really help you uh, get, get those, those conversions and make sure that that campaign is a real success. Um, then, on the other hand, it's also great for when you do uh, experiments which take a really long time otherwise. Think about uh, one thing that they said is you, with A-B testing you can have A, B, C. Uh, well, you can run through the alphabet. It can go pretty complicated. Um, these complex tests would usually run or could run for months or up to years if you really want to reach the right significance. Uh, with multi run Bandit, this would be done much quicker. You would uh, automatically see that those variations which really perform poorly, they would get dropped. You don't give them any traffic anymore you allocate that to those variations that could be potential winners. And when you do that, again, you get a lot more total conversions, you get the result quicker. Um, it really makes sense in those cases to go with multi arm banded experiments. Um, that being said, how quickly you reach this, this um, winner or how quickly you start dropping out uh, other variations all depends on which algorithm you pick. So, Within Frosmo, we use five algorithms at the moment. Uh, we have Thompson sampling, upper confidence bound one, one tuned, epsilon greedy, and softmax. Uh, the main difference between all of them is simply how aggressive they are. Uh, so how quickly are you gonna assign traffic to a winning variation? How quickly are you gonna drop out others? Are you gonna assign any traffic to those variations that aren't performing well? Um, it's really a, a risk versus reward uh, and this is why it's important for business to be also informed about which algorithms you pick. Um, are you really that confident that one of your variations is going to be much better? If so, you want to assign traffic to that as soon as possible. Um, or are there cases where uh, you think that they might be so close or people's taste might even change over time? In that case, you would uh, use one of the algorithms that always assigns traffic to all variations so that over time the result would correct themselves. Um, I think at the moment 90 to 95 percent of our customers use Thompson sampling or softmax and um, if we take a closer look at the, the use cases that makes total sense because as you can see they are on opposite sides of each other. Um, for example, in these use cases where you expect one variation to perform consistently over time. Uh, say, say if, whether you want a banner on your website or not. 
people will probably stick to one of those, like yes we like the banners or no we don't. And their taste will most likely not change, so you want to pick an algorithm that, um, that gets you a conclusion and that you can then turn off and just take that winning variation into practice, into use. Um, on the other hand, there are those cases where um, you expect those variations to fluctuate slowly over time. This could be to, for example, seasonality, um, different clothes, um, different colors being in season. Uh, in these cases, you would take an algorithm that would always assign some traffic to those variations that aren't performing maybe that great right now, but they could be in the future. And then the last one, it's a, it's a hybrid case where you're pretty sure you know that one is better now, but it's always good to keep on testing, so you always assign a little bit of traffic to those variations that could pick up. Um, another thing you could do here is drop out those, um, those variations that do perform poorly and replace them with something else. See if something else pits better against them. See if you can find a new winner. Uh, if you work this way, you can keep multi-arm banded experiments running indefinitely. And, um, but yeah, with these algorithms, with multi-arm banded, uh, with A-B testing, there's really no reason for you uh, not to experiment, I'd say. Yeah.